All right, so we are starting a part two going into the over $31. Uh, how's the best to describe these? I don't think any of these are a single miniature. Is that correct? And if they are, it would be a hob uh, hobby skull, uh, painter's scale if it is a single miniature. But I don't think any of these are single miniatures. Um, no, I do agree with you. The only one actually is uh, Till Death Do Us Part is the only one that's a one mini. Well, yeah, I guess it's, it's two minis on one base. Yeah, I, I suppose, but it's, there's no painters. There's no painter scale. So actually, is Elgernic? Um, is that's just the hobby scale, right? Uh, Elgernic is. I don't know if she's actually supposed to be painter scale, or if that's just how big she is. Like we don't really have any context to. It, but her she's size. one mini, right? She is one mini, yeah. Oh. And also the X Miss Twilight Knight is one mini as well. X Miss oh. Special Pinup Twilight Knight. Um, and then is that everything? I believe yes. And also Nico, uh, Holiday White Speaker Nico is also one miniature. Also Urza of Deadheim, I think, right? Sorry, Dead Urza. Heim? No, Dead she Heim. has. I think she has a this painter scale. Uh, yeah, but does she have a does she have a game scale? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, so I was wrong. <laughs> there are some exceptions here that are one mini. But uh, uh, these have lots of content, so it's it's it was best to break these off and not compare them to the single releases, even though Sun Lion Urza does compete with the amount of content you get. But you didn't uh, you didn't let me do my intro bit, by the way. You ruined it. Oh, okay. You can do it. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome uh, to part two of Bra Mithra's white box content review video. Perfect. I was, I was wondering if I should continue going with the bit, but I think that's a little bit uh, too high energy for me right now, to be honest. No, you gotta have that. Gotta bring the high energy. Uh, I'll totally include that. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So these, whew, uh, these vary. We'll just. I'm just gonna talk about this to, to just to be upfront. So hobby scale. Uh, that's a term that is not intended for gameplay. However, it is a 50 millimeter base, which is the size of a nemesis. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a two by two. Yeah. So I guess you could use them as a monster replacement or something, but most of these are going to be a painter's scale included with a game miniature. Or... They're going to be a collection of game size game the game miniatures. So that's pretty much all these. So, with that said, alphabetical order. These are not listed in any kind of preferential order, just listed alphabetically. So, let's begin with the 10th anniversary survivors. 10th anniversary survivors is i mean i already know this is one that everybody wants this is the one that everyone talks about all the time this is your core four starting survivors if they were lantern year 10 these are also the survivors as they look in gambler's chest as arc survivors the arc survivors hunt events seem to be based off the 10th anniversary survivors artwork so when you see the core four uh that's them that's what these are based off of. The core four are, of course, Alistair, Zachary, Urza, and Lucy. So it's just they're just Worst great. Girl last. Yeah, I mean, there's like there's if if you wanted just for the minis of these, if you really love the core four, the mascots of Kingdom Death and everything, the, these are great sculpts. These sculpts are very highly meta sculpts because they all use stuff in the game because they're meant to reflect that. So that means. All their gear sets, you could actually build them. Most of them are in leather. Some of them, I think one of them is in rawhide. One of them is, two of them are in leather. One's in rawhide. And I think the other is in, uh, is it lantern? Phoenix? I forget what the, I forget what, what, what the third one is. Or the fourth one, but. 
Maybe they're just three leather. Either way, uh, very neat, very meta builds as well, and they include uh, lots of patterns. Six different patterns, multiple different types of gear. This is all gear that's meant to work with people of the Lantern, so... It's like balanced towards that. It doesn't include. It doesn't take in like expansions and stuff. This is this is. I know this tenth anniversary is one is is definitely highly sought after, and I don't think it's gotten a reprint in a while. I think it originally came out in twenty seventeen. I think is correct. I think and it was a little bit later. I think it was. Well, when was the tenth anniversary? I think it was two thousand nineteen, wasn't it? Uh maybe. No, I think it was eighteen. It's gotta be twenty eighteen. Maybe somewhere in that three year period. Yeah, this, this was released <laughs> and then but it did get reprinted. So originally they had really cool boxes. Like I think there was four different boxes in the original printing, correct? Oh, but, you know what? I think I remember that. I don't it seems very vague memory, but I think people are like, oh, I got the Zachary box. Yes, or, I got the Urza box. Yes. Yeah, I think I think I have Zachary if I remember correctly. And then it was reprinted as as an actual white box, I think, for Black Friday or yeah, Black Friday. So whatever year it came out at Gen Con, they had the actual neat specialty boxes, and they sold the rest of those off in the after Gen Con sale, and then it was repeated Black Friday. But then that was it. We have not seen it since, and I know this is still a highly sought after one. Um yeah. we've talked about this. I've done a whole review on this. I d I don't know if we really need to talk about every single aspect of this because I've used them in a lot of my gameplay. Uh, they're very good. They're very... This one, you're going to see a lot of play with this. This is going to... This is, they're yeah. very good. I mean, is there any specific guess, one like, you want to highlight? Just, I would just summarize that it came with six seed pattern cards. They weren't seed pattern cards back then. These were some of the first seed patterns that we saw. They were insight patterns back then. And then eight gear cards because you got two copies of Tempered Dagger and you got two copies of Tempered Axe. Um, so you got four minis, six seed pattern cards, eight gear cards. That was the contents of the, the box. Yep. Very good. <laughs> Ten this is very good. That's I mean, that's I it's I This is one where I would say if you really want to chase it down and you want to pay, that's up to you. Uh, and I would understand that. I don't know if this is get reprinted because it is 10th anniversary. I think we'll see the core four maybe for a 15th anniversary, which might be right around the corner. So, uh, I mean, would you suggest chasing this down? I would understand it if someone wanted to chase this down. I don't know how much I they think, go uh, for. It. We'll wait till the end of, okay. End of the review. Okay. <laughs> I was just trying to do the likely to reprint it because I think all of these are going to be likely to. Reprint. I think I think it's likely to get reprinted. I think because the patterns, the seed patterns don't match the current gambler chest um, version, there'll probably be a new new version of the cards. So we're likely to probably see these with the correct orange backs, and also I would assume we'd be likely to see them in a card pack if they're reprinted in in that format as well. Yeah. They're also missing all their um, all the all the gear cards should have the gold pattern symbol like in the top right corner of the gear card uh, to show that it's a seed pattern gear. So and they're missing that as well. Yeah. So yeah, they they have some changes that they could have made. So that is tenth anniversary survivors. Uh, next, this is one of the newer ones. Uh, this is. Death Crown Inheritor Aya. Uh, Death Crown Inheritor Aya is the first one we're going to talk. So it has a painter scale, which is a different sculpt than the game scale. Now the painter, the hobby scale for this one, the painter scale. I don't necessarily love it. I think it's neat. It is Aya and everything, but the game scale mini I really like. Uh, I should note that <laughs> I on our list we're calling these. Below, we did below 31, and then we just did over 31. Let me just note that almost none of these are going to be less than $50. These are all looking at 60 USD. Most of these. Death Inheritor Aya is 60 USD, I know that. The only ones that get down to 50 are the older ones. Like Oktoberfest Aya was down towards 50, and Death to Us Part was down towards 40. 
But other than that, every single thing we're talking about here is going to be almost 60 and up. So, just to let you know. <laughs> um, but Death Inheritor Aya, this, was, this is neat. This one's a little bit mind-boggling because it released so close to Gambler's Chest that I think I would have handled this differently. Mm -hmm. um, I think this was, should have been an indomitable resource. Yeah, this was like in the same way that Story of Blood from the under 31 white, spo uh, white boxes um, teased knowledge cards. This set was meant to tease indomitable resources. Same actually with the white um, well, I guess not really. That that one makes sense because you get it from train. But yeah, this is you get it from like a legendary phoenix, the strange resource that it has. Uh, so it should have just they should have just committed to the indomitable resources. Yeah, because I had that release early. People have been like, "Whoa, what's what the heck's going on?" So the contents of this box was the one painter scale mini, the one gameplay scale mini, um, a legendary phoenix AI card trait. Uh, two regular pattern cards, a strange resource, and the two gear cards uh, that you could make from the pattern cards. So the kind of order of operations is you would add the legendary trait card to the Phoenix. If you um, defeat it when it has that mood uh, or that trait in play, you would gain the undying heart strange resource that would unlock the heart bow pattern and the heart stop arrows pattern, which would then allow you to craft the heart bow and the heart stop arrows. So that's kind of in a nutshell how indomitable resources work, just minus the one extra trait card, I suppose, even though you get them from indomitable, I suppose, uh, the trait. Uh, but it seems like when you like put that extra step in it, it makes it seem like kind of extra convoluted, like in how you. This is extra convoluted. How you, how you get them, but I mean, it works. It works. It's it's nice. I just would have rathered it have been an indomitable resource because yes. it seems kind of strange now that we know that they exist. Um, Especially how close this but... was released to Gamblers Chest. This was released probably May. Was this released in May? But I know, like, we know that that Aya figure has existed for a long time because there was renders online of the painter scale Aya. Yep, that's true. Several uh, years before it was released, so... Yep, uh, I mean, that's... It's, it's kind of been hanging out there. How long has this content existed? We don't know. Well, definitely but, not that long because yeah. the recipes are the brand new recipes. These pattern cards are new. Yeah. Yeah, so... That's that's one of the one things I I would have changed about it, but I do like that we get a new legendary phoenix card. Um, I also kind of wonder, like you know, was this content that was going to be in the gambler's chest originally, since the phoenix is a quarry, and then they're just like, no, let's do a white box for it. And, um, yeah, maybe. Kind of like cut it out or something. I don't know, but it is an it is an interesting way to kind of tease the indomitable resource. I just system. don't like that it's random, and if you really wanted to make this stuff, right. you'd have to f hope that you draw the legendary card. They should have made it a basic hunt event that tutored the legendary card or something. Yeah. Perhaps. Either way, uh, that's Death Crown Inheritor Aya. Next, we go to... Uh, what is this? Oh, Devil Satan. So this is an interesting one. I like Hope Stealer. <laughs> this is the um, uh, the weirdest of all of them, but I think this is super neat because it, it messes around with the death count. There's now death count stuff that's in Gambler's Chest uh, and, and things, but this is the first time I think anything ever interacted with the death count. Mm, yeah. Um, this is a very neat one. It also changes up the regular hunt event that normally just becomes bricked if you were to get the adventure sword. Now at least you could get yeah. something else. <laughs> I actually really like the Hope Stealer. Like, um, yeah, like the the event itself. Uh, I think I've said it in a video before, but 
if not i'll repeat it but i think the adventure sword it's like a, it's like a fun reference but it's so dated now based on like because it's a reference to adventure time i should say yeah uh, well not familiar but so kind of being able to get something that's not so pop culture culture i suppose is more interesting to me um but yeah the hope stealer is an interesting weapon Nobody's really talked about it, I don't think, since Gambler Chess came out, but with some of the um, homicidalism abilities and uh, knowledges, I think it would, could be quite a good weapon. Yep. Uh, the only thing that's interesting about it is the at the end of the showdown, you die. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I just missed that part. Yeah. That is. Okay, the... Never mind. Maybe it's not the best to. Well, it depends. Well, you well would... I guess you know you're. Yeah, you're. Like you could, you could just kill. Like we're gonna. I'm gonna spoil a little bit of homicidalism. But you no, could go just ahead. Kill. You could just kill a. Uh, I guess you already did it in your videos. Yep. That's you could kill you. a survivor who had Hope Stealer. That's what you do. At the end of the showdown, right? So yep. it's like you're already. They're already sacrificial. So it's just like whatever. Take them out. Yep. Dark Impulse Three. The person holding Hope Stealer. Got to get those numbers up, rookie. Yep. I think this Hope Seal is very unique. I think it's very cool. I think it's nice that it attaches to a hunt event that will always be used in the game unless you're using a different hunt event table. I think things that uh, are not, uh, you know, restricted to certain quarries and stuff are more interesting. Yeah, one of the downsides of this card is that, like, the the way you gain it is kind of on the back of the card so if you don't remember that you have this card or you don't remember it's triggering event or if you're playing blind it's it's very easy to miss um, yes as a as a little bit of a shout out to myself i made a special card that lets you track these kind of card gain milestones maybe maybe bra will put it in the, the video description for you to get yes I, I can do that um if this were to be reprinted and re-released now, this would be either an install guide or it would probably be a strain. I don't know how they would handle I don't this know one. If it'd, I don't know if it'd be a strain. I don't know how they would do it. I don't know how they would do this one. Because they still, they've been doing these this style of card even recently, like with uh, Mechanical Heart and Needle Sword, right? So, yep. Um, I think it'd stay the same. I don't think anything would change. I don't think it'd become a pattern or... Well, I would hope they wouldn't leave it on the back of the card. Because <laughs> that oh. is super annoying. A bookmark? There you go. Use bookmarks. Yeah, or like a sticker or something added to that. I don't know where that's where that hunt event is in the book, if that'd be uh, a viable option. But, I mean, you can only add so many stickers to the book, too, you know? Yep. So, that yeah. is uh, Devil Satan. The next one is Easter Aya. This was the... Oh, I'm trying to picture... I don't have images of all these many. This is the one with reference to Silent Hill 2, right? That Easter Aya? Um, uh, yeah, with the rabbit. With I the rabbit, yeah. I don't yep. know much about Silent Hill, but I think I remember you talking about that whenever this released the first time. Oh, okay. Well, is this the one with where she's holding the rabbit? The stuffed rabbit? It sure is. Okay, so that this is the one that has a sound... Okay. Uh, this is a painter scale, I think, only, then. I uh, know it had a gameplay style. Oh, it does? Um, okay. Uh, now this... Yeah. <laughs> this one... This, this is the... The gear in this is the ancient ancient root. Uh, we've talked at length about how this works and what you would ever do with this. Uh, this is just... This is baffling to me. The ancient root. Uh, it's It's cool. But this is just such a weird thing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about this and what you could do with it. This, this is, So, how you get it is during Black Harvest, so it requires Dung Beetle Knight, even though it doesn't say that, the old white boxes used to never mention that you needed expansions. And it used to just be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, you bought it and it's like, oh, I can't even use this for the expansion. Yep. Uh, and then, if the Gatherer is insane... They follow a shrill echo in the darkness. A fleshy stalk quivers in the ground. Its muffled shrieking begs to be uprooted. Gain the ancient root gear. So then you would gain this. This is... <laughs> 
When you are picked as a target while insane, the carrot shrieks fearfully. Roll 1d10. On a 1, the shrill sound stuns you. You are doomed for the rest of the monster's action. On a 6 plus, or 6 plus, the harsh note alerts you. Ignore the first hit of the monster's attack. <laughs> Do you think this would work for Terrified or no? I don't know. This I don't even know. Could we bypass Terrified using the ancient route? Who knows? <laughs> this is this is such an awkward thing, right? Because it says when you are picked as a target. But technically, I don't know. I don't even know if we want to do tasting notes on this. I'm not I don't you know what? We're, we shouldn't talk about tasting notes on this, but this is such an awkward one. Basically, this is the best thing in the world for using with dead uh our Deadheim, Urza of Deadheim. That's it, pretty much. So if you really, if what you really, happens if you roll a two to two to five? I I, I know, but we're not going to do nothing. nothing happens. <laughs> no, I guess yeah, whatever. We're not going to do. I love notes I love I love the ancient root just for like how silly it is. Like I love how he looks. He's a goofy little carrot. Yep. Uh, I think the way you gain it is pretty uh, interesting. Like it's nice and fluffy. Um, but yeah, yeah. You only get the one card. This is like. If you like to paint like the kind of pinup style holiday miniatures and stuff, this is a, a good card to get or a good miniature to get. Um, I'd say that for both this one and um, Devil Satan. I've seen a lot of people paint Devil Satan. Actually, that's yes. probably one of the the models I've seen painted the most. Actually, yeah. Now that I think Devil about it, Satan. I don't think I've ever even seen. We sh we should probably talk about. We, did, we, well, we didn't talk about this in part one. Maybe we should have. Well, no, we did for Allison. I did say Allison's probably one of the most iconically painted King of Death minis. Um, but yeah, I don't even think I've ever even seen people painting Easter Aya. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen it, but I, I don't know. But it looks like it'd be a fun model paint. I have I have almost no painting skills. So yeah, I, uh, I, I'm more interested in like the card content, but I could definitely see the appeal to uh, people. Yep. Ooh, this one, if painting. if you really love the paintings. Urza stuff, this is perfect. The ancient root is perfect for Urza's thing. Urza of Deadheim. It's, it's it's Aya. What? No. Oh, Easter Aya. What I say? Urza. No, I said this really goes well with Urza of Deadheim. Oh yes, it does. I was going to talk about that when we got to Urza of Deadheim. Sorry, yeah. I misheard. Yes, this is amazing for Urza of Deadheim. But other than, outside of that, I don't see any reason to ever use this because it's so weird and so awkward and I don't even know how this works. But there you go. Uh, that's Easter Aya. So next we've just... Uh, I've done videos on all of these, talking about all of these. I've done 20-minute videos on every single one of these things, at least. So we can kind of just go through these. We don't need to, to talk about every single one. We will just talk about what we enjoy of each one. And of course, I am talking about the Echoes of Death 1 through 4. Um, this, much like with the... Uh, in part 1 when we talked about the White Speaker, 10th Anniversary White Speaker, these include strains. Strains are basically just trophy hunting that's all they are or you know like achievement hunting achievements yeah whatever it is that's all they are right they have a condition they are always active they have a condition you do the condition you get the permanent effect in echoes death case it is always a fighting art as of right now it is always a fighting art so all one through four that is 16 fighting arts so and 16 strains and then the strain, once you complete it, you never do it ever again. It is then removed, and the fighting art is then added. We'll talk about the rules for the fighting arts just in bulk right now. So we're talking about, again, Echoes 1 through 4. The current rules for Echoes 1 through 4, this may change in the future, but the current rules are you can have five of them at one time. Yeah, that's five, yeah. And you get them at random at the start of your campaign through the ones that you've unlocked. So I'll just use myself for an example, because if anybody's watched my playthroughs, you know that I have seven of these unlocked. And when I started my most latest season, not Gambler's Chest, because my Gambler's Chest is a pure playthrough playing pure Gambler's Chest. But if you watched the uh, last one I did where it wasn't Gambler's Chest, I shuffled all seven of those at one time and I drew five of them. And then I just didn't get the other two. And if you're like me and you have very bad luck and you play by the rules, that means 
that the strain that we worked an entire campaign to get, and then once we got it on the last Lantern year, Lantern year 29, which did happen to be in season two, when I started season three, I didn't draw it. So that sucked. <laughs> That's um, it. <laughs> one of the other things to note about strain fighting arts is that even though there's 16 uh, strain fighting arts just from Echoes of Death, the story of blood also counts towards that five. Yes, uh, it does because it is a strain, strain fighting, fighting art. Uh, so that's all of them. So each one, Echoes of Death 1 through 4, you will get four strains and four fighting arts. Uh, Echoes of Death 3 also includes a vermin. Vermin follows the same exact rules. The vermin is only included if you include the Armored Fist fighting art. Otherwise, the vermin is not included in your deck. So. Oh, one, one time I was playing and I got a scrap sword from, uh, that's debris, I think, right? That gives you that debris pile uh yes debris uh, I, I got a scrap sword i could have killed the monster but i forgot that sweat stained oath exists and just just missed getting that by a hair Oof. <sighs> makes me makes me sad yeah thinking about it Oof. yeah next time yeah i forget what well, i got sweat strained oath i think i might have gotten the most ridiculous sweat stained oath actually I think I got it with Adventure Sword. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, but anyway, so let's just talk Echoes of Death 1. Echoes of Death 1, this is the first one. Um, the Echoes of Death 1, I'm just going to say it like it is. This is if you want to get infinite lives, right? Do you have anything else you want to add? Do I want to say anything? Yeah, about Echoes of Death 1. It's pretty much just Infinity Lives. Um, yeah, I think there's some interesting stuff in Echoes of Death 1, but it's like the least interesting of the four. So I agree. Far. I think Backstabber uh, is neat. I think of all the four minis, they are also some of the weakest minis. I do like uh, <laughs> Echoes of Death... <laughs> Echoes of Death 1 is interesting because this was when they decided to up the scale. This was the first release ever to have the new scale. And then everyone was like, oh, she's so much bigger because of Giant's Blood. No, they just up oh, the yeah. they just up the scale. <laughs> it's Actually, I wish they had made her Bone Eater scale because that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, would have been neat. I, uh... But uh, she's neat. Uh, I really like that mini. That's the fighter mini. Uh, backstabber. Uh, the other, the other three, I think, are weak of the four. Uh, I think echoes of so that's echoes of death one. I like backstabber, and then pretty much if you want infinite lives, infinite lives is nuts. Infinite lives is really good. Everyone says to use infinite lives, so infinite lives is great. Let's go down to echoes of death two. Actually, infinite lives would be a really good fighting art to get on a arc survivor. Yep. It's just interesting. I mean, you could just drop the word arc there. Infinite Lives is a very yeah. good fighting art to get on a survivor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Echoes of Death 2. Oh, I should note that Echoes of Death 1 has never been... Re it never got reprinted. It did, like, the second Black Friday. So Echoes came out on a Black... Or came out, I think, at a Gen Con. Then it got reprinted into Black Friday. Then it was reprinted the same time Echoes of Death 2 launched, but then after that, Echoes of Death 1 hasn't come out. And then that's the same for Echoes of Death 2. When Echoes of Death 3 launched, Echoes of Death 2 was reprinted. So I'm assuming this Black Friday, Echoes of Death 4, which was released at Gen Con, will see a reprint with Echoes of Death 3, and I don't know if the other Echoes will come out, but we'll see. But they have not been reprinted. Um, so, Echoes of Death 2, again, four fighting arts, for strains this is i like these two miniatures in here are really good i like the uh actually three of these are pretty good the bow miniature is pretty good because she's just wearing unarmored stuff uh the lantern armor with the phoenix set for shield of rank pretty sick that's a good one the gladiator re-sculpt and uh the convulsayer is pretty sick because she's wearing like gorm and she's got like a riot mace right isn't that isn't that what she's got uh, that's a good question. I do love the gladiator uh, fit, though. Yes. Fit check. Yeah. Uh, now for the fighting arts themselves. Convulsayer. Busted. Uh, I think yes. it actually got 
uh it actually got some errata to it um yeah that was the what that was one of the ones where they're like yeah we need to change that because it's yeah it's not uh it doesn't uh, work the way they want it to work Inferno Rhythm. I originally said Inferno Rhythm would be the most busted thing, but you can't really get it with Ark Survivors. But Inferno Rhythm, playing a regular Survivor campaign using Smog Singers, Inferno Rhythm is going to be nuts. <laughs> well, when, if that one question we asked for tasting, tasting notes is yes, you know, that makes it very interesting. Yeah, it makes it very interesting. I agree. Um, Basically, we were, we were asking, I guess it's good to not leave people kind of in the dark, but we were asking if, like, when you're playing a arc survivor campaign, if if a survivor that you gain from an event, like, plus you find someone in the darkness, plus one population, like, does do they count as arc survivors in an arc survivor campaign, or do they just count as regular survivors? So if they're regular survivors and you're able to kind of like uh balance like having arc survivors and regular survivors on a, in in one of those campaigns you could do some pretty kooky stuff with knowledges and and yep. uh fighting art simultaneously yep i agree uh then we have rolling gate rolling gate is kind of busted not gonna lie <laughs> uh and then shield the ring is the most fun fighting art i've ever seen ever in my whole life i love shield the ring so that's Echoes of Death 2. I think Echoes of Death 2 is overall pretty good. I think Echoes of Death 2 is really good. Shield of Rain, Gusk Knife combo. Uh, yep. Shield of Rain is super fun. Uh, next, we have Echoes of Death 3. Echoes of Death 3 has uh, four miniatures, four, or four fighting arts, four strange, just like everything else, four miniatures. The miniatures here, I think, are... I used to think three of the four were really good. Now I think two of them are really good because Armored Fist 1 kind of got replaced by Echoes of Death 4. Uh, they kind of both have the same niche, but I kind of prefer the Croc Armored 1. I like her better. So that kind of sucks for Echoes of Death 3. <laughs> but uh, I mean, there's, there's room for both of them, IMO. Sure. They can, they can live peacefully next to each other. You know, fighter versus... Sure. What is... What's, What's the one in Echoes of Death for? That's Boxer. Um, Boxer, yeah, and and yep. uh, Monk. Monk, yep. Uh, such a shame that you can't get uh, since the you know the Croc stuff is you know gonna be everyone's gonna be playing with our survivors. Too bad you can't get those strains. But uh, that Croc arm, whatever that weapon is in Game with Chest, the one that's a shield, immortal arm, immortal arm, shield ring that. <laughs> Shield the ring that that should you shouldn't be able to because it's locked. That yeah. should be that should be errated onto that card. But yeah, yeah. I guess it's up to you when you unlock it versus not unlock it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. We got Sword Oath. Sword Oath is a very interesting strain. This is Echoes of Death Three. Sword Oath, I think, is one of the more narrative. It has a lot of busy work, but now that I've played Gambler's Chest, I don't think that's that's much camp. That's much book work, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a... <laughs> I used to think it was a lot of book work, right? I was like, man, this is kind of a lot. You have to track this forever, but now who cares, right? I gotta, write a, I gotta write a little line on my settlement yeah. on my survivor record sheet every time I wound. What the heck? Yeah, I think sort of. I gotta track like 17 observations at once. And Yep. Uh, I think Sword Oath's neat. I think Sword Oath's pretty narrative. I like Sword Oath. I like the anime theme of it. I like the naming a sword and all that stuff. I think, I think it's neat. I think Sword Oath's neat. Uh, Stockist is just weird, 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 but I love the mini for Stockist. I love the, both the Sword Oath mini and the Stockist mini, the Sniper and the uh, Knight, I forget what, or Paladin. I forget what they were, but the generic lines. Um, then we have Dark Manifestation. This is a very neat one. Uh, kind of ridiculous because it's kind of easy to get so much insanity in this game, but and just performing wounds by touching people is kind of crazy. Touching monsters, I mean, it's kind of nuts. Uh, Dark Manifestation. If you can, uh, if you were in a showdown with Bloodpool now, and not Crimson Croc probably, but some other monster, you could you could probably stack some insanity from drinking from Bloodpool pretty quickly. Yeah. To uh, to pull this off, to proc this. Yeah. Um, next, we have uh, Armored Fist. This one is neat. Uh, this one led to some very neat tasting notes because of the requires fist and tooth proficiency thing. Uh, but. Yeah, interesting. Armored Fist, I think, is very neat. I like Armored Fist. So, those are the three. Yeah, I, I wasn't very happy with, like, the 
the the answer for like the fiddler crab spider. Did I don't know if you mentioned that when you were talking about the the summary of it that this also includes the vermin, but uh, yes, I did mention that in the summary. Okay. I yes, the the vermin is attached to armor fist because the vermin tutors the thing. Yeah. I agree. It would have been neat to be able to have the vermin outside of it and then tutor the fighting art, but it is what it is. Oh, okay. Uh, I always forget. But not everybody knows what t- tutor is like. You you can you can search the fighting art deck to gain it after you eat that crab. You can gain this specific fighting art. Um. The newest one now, Echoes of Death 4. We just talked about this. I just made a video on this. But again, we'll just quickly go over it. This has... uh, I like two of the minis in this. Uh, I really like Sieging Offensive, the mini, whoever that is. I think that's like the knight that used to have... The generic knight that had the the strap... Paladin... uh, The shield strapped to her arms. I forget what one that is. But that generic line. I like the Sieging Offensive mini and Novice. I really like Novice. So, uh, oh, and the Croc arm. I think it's better than the other Fist Tooth one. But, so, uh, again, just talked about all these. Curse Conductor is kind of nuts. <laughs> I yeah. think Curse Conductor is kind of nuts. I, uh, I really want to try Curse Conductor out, actually. But, um, yeah, me and me and Bra had talked about some, some of the interesting stuff that you can do with Curse Conductor when you use gear cards that let you kind of hijack the monster controller tile. So uh, Gloomhammer was one of them. And then there was a new gear card from Gambler's Chess, I believe, right? That let you do that? Uh, yes. So, um, so yeah, you can uh, kind of hijack that and like permanently nerf a monster using uh, Curse Conductor and then uh, also with arrows. And there's a lot of you know stockist has a good one rolling gate like there's a lot of good other arrow utility um like a line arrow fighting arts so yep really good it's nice to, it's nice to see you know a gambler's chess with knowledges uh philosophies like all this kind of stuff it's nice to see like fighting arts still getting support um, i agree so i, I, I know a lot of people were that. saying that they hoped knowledges would be in the echoes four I'm glad they were still fighting arts. Um, all right, so there's all the echoes. You have any thing to add? Um, I like echoes. I love that they are like a yearly thing. We missed a couple years because of COVID, but um, yeah, like we got them every Gen Con, pretty much that they've gone, and I hope they continue doing them. I also, I think we're running a bit low, right? I think we there's only enough generic models for one more. I think yeah, they need to crank out some generics. And yeah, uh, <laughs> all I'm right. sure there's plenty in the queue. Next, we go to Elgrenic. Oh, Elgrenic, yeah. Yep. So Elgrenic. Um, yeah, Elgrenic was a, our Christmas mini uh, last Christmas. You gave me your heart, and the very next day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> great song. This you're gonna is get, uh, you're gonna get a content strike now for that. Nah. <laughs> so Elgnerk was released. Uh, she had just a single model. It was her riding her uh, steed. Uh, if you want to call it that, I don't know if you're gonna be able to show that one on. Yeah, I've done a video on, on El. Done video on all these. I've done a video on all right. So yeah, we got the one video of Elgnerk. Or sorry, we got the (laughs) we got the one we got the one video and the one miniature of Elgnerk. Um and then Elgnerk also came with like a special Christmas card that had this uh like hunt event um like a bonus hunt event almost inside of it. So the idea is whenever it's the holiday season you would put Elgnerk on the hunt board, and then when you roll, um, I think it's like when you roll doubles, like one, like 11, 22, 33, I believe, right? Yeah, when the dice match. Um, then you move her one space towards the survivors, and when they enter the same space as her, you would read this um, read this holiday card. Um, so I love that idea. Like it's kind of it kind of 
is the same feel I have for the bookmark from Ringtail Vixen. Just this really unique way to incorporate game rules. Um, and yeah, it's 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 very interesting. We were just talking about, before we even recorded, we were talking about Elgneric and how she she could be a painter scale. Oh, actually, they do say she is painter scale in the store description for her. So I, I assume that in in the canon, she is survivor sized. Um, so never mind what I was just talking about there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you can always, if you want to do stuff with the the hobby scale, you're free to sub them for monsters because they are fifty millimeters, so they're two by two. So this is the first time that a painter scale model has had like, interaction yep. in game like use, though. So yep. that's that's kind of one of the more interesting aspects of of this miniature. But I agree. Um, yeah, I love I love the content. I found these. I was at this in in the city I live. There's <laughs> there's a <laughs> dox myself. There's a uh, Japanese store which I also won't name, but um, <laughs> there <laughs> there they had these. They have all kinds of sleeves and stuff, and they had actual like Christmas card sleeves or like greeting card sleeve so i was able to find like the perfect size sleeve for the elgnerk card which was something that um, i had i had tried and failed to find oh nice um, through english solutions so if you're looking to sleeve your elgnerk <laughs> christmas card look for japanese gift greeting card <laughs> sleeves in the city you live <laughs> in the city i live in at the store unspecified store that yeah. i visited <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, I think it's neat. I think it's neat. This is the first time there's ever been any kind of, well, not, not, at, at the time, this was the first hunt interaction content, too. Now there's bone eaters, but, uh, you know, stuff that would move around on the hunt board, interrupt the hunt phase. Interesting. Yeah, it makes me wonder if we'll get, like, any kind of future Elgnark content. I would... I would like to see more of her story based on like what we have seen with Atnes in the gambler's chest. And, yeah. And from the story, like she could be, she could even be a cool encounter, right? Like maybe assuming she even exists. Um, <laughs> perhaps, uh, next we have, um, now Urza. Urza. That's what you were saying. Yes. Urza of Deadheim. Let's talk about Urza of Deadheim. This yeah. is a very Urza, interesting one. Urza of Deadheim was our 2022 Halloween release. I Correct. Believe, right? Man, it's crazy that that much time. It's almost been a year since Halloween already. Like, that's wild. Yep. Anyways, just getting over the fleeting existence of my life. Um, <laughs> in the city Urza you of live Deadheim, at the store you live. In the city I live at the store I visited. Uh, Urza of Deadheim um uh, included three seed pattern cards this is i believe the first time seed pattern cards were in their true form but i you know i <laughs> i know that the pattern cards themselves have an orange back card back in gambler's chest i'm not even sure if these do they might have a gray uh you anyway, might be right with that i so they i don't even think they're the true form of seed pattern cards so they would need a reprint as well um, I think as far as the uh, gear keywords, I think they all require seed as well. So this would be a good candidate for another uh, card pack um, update for pattern cards. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it can, includes three seed pattern cards, includes three pattern gear cards. Um, this this release had really interesting lore associated with it that I really like. Um, I like the Halloween stuff. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. The Doom tokens, we had a lot of fun um, kind of speculating on how we could use those. And as as Bra alluded to earlier, Ancient Root would would be really effective in a, in yep. a uh, Scythe of Doom build, uh, Robes of Deadheim build. Yep. These are uh, very neat. Uh, yep, the lore for this is also very cool. Uh, you said Urza has a game miniature on this as well. I don't remember it. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she has the scythe. She's like carrying it behind her back, kind of thing. 
All right. Well, yeah, this was a very, very, very cool hobby sculpt. Whether she was on the books and stuff, and the books have the uh, the the uh, cipher on them. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. This is this is one of my favorite hobby sculpts. This one. Um, this is very cool. Yeah, I like the I like the painter mini a lot. I'm not like a huge fan of the. Um, the actual like gameplay mini because her heels are so ridiculously huge. Yeah, in stilettos. this, I'm just like, man, you you would not be able to run on stone faces in those heels. Like, yeah, very forgettable. I didn't even like, think she had one, so it must. <laughs> or she's just so proficient that's like scary in its own way, you know. Yeah, this was sick. This this was very cool. I, this is a really good one. I really I really like this one. This is another one that's really tough for me because of the uh, you know. Just because of the price point, it's another sixty dollar thing, just like Death Inheritor Aya. But man, this has some really cool game content. Like not just like yeah. them. It's not just like Halloween theme. Like this is thematic to the lore, even with the books. And then putting like uh, Ga Gosrius. What was the name of the Pumpkin King? Gosrius. Yeah, Gazarius. Gazarius. And then the cipher. The cipher alludes to some monster called the Harvest Knight. Yeah. Oh, this so was such there a was fun. Like, a, like, yeah, there's like a lot of stealth, like like lore drop in this so. yeah this was a very very fun release some of it wasn't even stealth some of it was like pretty freaking in your face you know like yeah <laughs> this was a good one um so i hope we get to see more from this uh setting like the yeah the dead Deadheim Deadheim yeah. supplements yeah I, I would really like to see like deadheim alistair um something so i'm so maybe this halloween we'll see something like that but yeah. again yeah the pattern cards need to be reprinted if they want to get them to the seed pattern standard that uh gambler's chest has that's another one of these kind of like why didn't they just release it like if they already like this is pretty close release to gambler's chest like it's just been a year so yeah those those cards i imagine would have been finalized perhaps so it's like you know the consistency on pattern cards has just been something that ongoingly triggers me which i mentioned earlier so anyway good content <laughs> uh i agree i liked that i was uh, for all around the the mini i liked the hobby uh i guess the mini was forgettable because i again i i guess i don't remember what she looked like yeah, you literally forgot it <laughs> i know yeah but that's a shame but but again the whole the lore the 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 hobby miniature looks so cool the the patterns were really cool they're really thematic they're useful they have a really niche thing like a really niche build new like the doom bound stuff it's all really cool stuff um, so that was De uh, Urza of Deadheim. Next, we have the Halloween Survivors Series Two. So these are uh, a group of four survivors dressed in costumes. I don't think the survivors are any special survivors. Like it's not like the, the original Halloween costumes were the starting four. These are just nobodies. I think these don't these don't have names. I don't think. I'm sure they have names internally, but uh, no, that's not probably like true. Uh, yeah, these are very cool uh, costumes, though. Uh, the big bite, it's yeah. the croc costume. Uh, the great golden cat, which is very neat. I think it's actually supposed to be the legendary monster and not the lion god, right? Um, yeah, I think it's, well, yeah. I think it's just supposed to be the white lion, but oh, okay. uh, whether it's like the golden eyed, no, because that's the phoenix, if, whether it's like the... Great Golden Cat or whatever. Yeah, that's what I think it is, Great Golden Cat. And then you got the Wretching costume, which is Gorm, and then you've got Screaming costume, which is Screaming uh, Antelope. Now, these um, are very weird. Again, these are like the Flower Knight costume. They're just they're just like very gimmicky things where just on arrival you roll a d10 and then some random shenanigans happen. <laughs> Uh, they're just very, very random. I don't know how how useful they would be, how much you would actually want to make these, but uh, some of them are ridiculous. I think the wretched costume is probably the best one, but very neat. They're all very cool stuff. They're um, insight patterns, so they are. Yeah, these are like a little bit older of the style of adder seed pattern cards. Yeah, um, which you know again makes them a great candidate for being reprinted but uh yeah there's also a new special rule in in um gambler's chest that would have been great for these uh 
um, cards, and that's the full ensemble rule that was on the Neko Twilight armor. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, so hypothetically, I think these should have those special rules, all these costumes. Yeah, they um, should get One reduced. of the nice things about these pattern or these seed patterns is that um, like the gold cat costume and the screaming antelope costume, you require you're required to have the white lion or the screaming antelope respectively in your campaign in order to unlock these patterns. But the big bite costume, which is the crimson croc and the retching costume, which is based on Gorm, like don't actually require those expansions or those monsters to be present in your campaign. So it's like, it's like on one hand, it's a little weird on the second hand. It's a little nice because um, players aren't, you know, they don't own that content. They're not restricted. Like imagine this came out in 2020, I think 21. Mm -hmm. 2021 and it's like you need the crimson croc to make this costume it's it's like two years later mm -hmm. before you can even make it yeah i don't even know if they had settled on what the croc looks like he's not painted correctly in the big bite costume it's painted like an alligator green yeah you, you make do with what you got you know <laughs> uh very interesting i i, I love these costumes man i i, I really want to see yeah. more of these costumes like if they did a series three and did four more costumes i'd be like, I, I would rather that than, like, the one-offs. I agree. Uh, I, I Like I was saying with the Flower Knight, I think the costumes are very unique sculpts. You're, they're never going to be, yeah. like, this is it, right? They're not going to be out making more big bike costumes. They're not going to be making more retching costumes. Like, if you want this, this is it. You got to get this one if you want something like this. I just, I think they're, I just love how silly they are. Yeah, like, I think they look great on the table. I think these things are just great. I think this is a, a very good one. I'm glad they come with gear too. I'm glad they have, they actually include stuff. Because again, the, the original one, the original Survivors didn't. The original Halloween Survivors. Yeah. So, very neat. Uh, I also like the idea of getting stuff like this. Uh, where you get a pack of four, right? Because other than that, it was Echoes of Death and ten, like the Survivors, 10th Anniversary Survivors. Like, this opens the door for maybe possibly getting, like, the Barbarian stuff all in one big group like this. That'd be great. Yeah, I actually hope so. That'd be, uh, bar Barbarianism needs, like, needs that, that, that boost, you know? Yeah, I think it'd be great. Uh, sticking with Halloween, let's go to Halloween Ringtail Vixen, which is the next one. Halloween... Moving on to part two of part two, you know? No. <laughs> No. <laughs> so Halloween Ringtail Vixen. Uh, this was the uh, Ringtail Vixen reprint, kind of, but a Halloween version of her uh, that we never saw the bookmark again. She did not include the bookmark, and this time she just included her other stuff, which was her tail and her bat. Uh, and then she also had a DJ hobby print. Was that what the, that's what this was, right? The, Sorry. The hobby scale of the Ringtail Vixen, she was like a DJ, right? Or she was not sitting on speakers. Is that this one? Um, I think this one might have actually only been one. Oh, no, she does. She's she's sitting on like a big stack of something. She's not like a DJ or anything, though. Uh, for some reason, I remember her sitting on speakers and like having headphones on. Oh, maybe. Oh, she does have headphones on. I never noticed that. Crazy. Yeah. Nice. Weird. Yeah. Uh, so that's the hobby sculpt. And then it, it's just the same thing again, right? The the game sculpt is just Ringtail Vixen again, right? Uh, the game sculpt is Ringtail Vixen, but it's more like pinup style. And oh, okay. She's wearing like a, she's wearing like a jacket. But uh, like the sculpt is super dynamic. Like she's swinging that bat and it's like covered in blood. Yeah. It's actually awesome. It looks cool. Uh, but no bookmark that time. So I don't know if we'll see that bookmark one reprinted. Either way... This is some cool stuff. Uh, the well, this one, this one was really interesting because you needed the bookmark in order to yes. craft the pattern here, right? Like yes. Um, so yeah, so this one it never stated it in the the store update. This is nope. what we talked about this a little bit earlier, in that you know we didn't really we never really knew what we need in order to craft some of this gear or like what expansions are required, but. Yeah, if you if you want this gear, like if you want to make these these pieces of gear, or at least the vixen tail, that one piece, you need to have the yep. ringtail vixen white box with the infinite drift bookmark in yep. order to. And the pattern is tied. Out. It's even yeah, the requirement of owning the white box. Right. So, so weird. 
Yeah. So it is uh, kind of strange. And again, the brazen bat features the that pumpkin. pumpkin monster icon that uh, yeah. we have no clue what it does yet. Um, so TBD on on how effective that is of a special rule, what it means for us as players, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The rest of the uh, the, the special rule for brazen bats pretty good. It ignore reactions. So mm -hmm. that's always like a pretty powerful ability. Vixen tail here is super weird. Uh, I didn't notice this until looking at this right now, but we should probably ask Tace about this. It says, if you are insane, you cannot be ambushed. Uh, does that mean only when you're the event revealer, or does that mean just the whole hunting party? Who knows? TBD. So, this uh, is a very weird one. Uh, so, yeah, Ringtail Vixen, like, I think, like, the model's awesome. It's a uh, very interesting painter's scale mini. Um, not my cup of tea because i want to stay kind of canon to kingdom death stuff but um the content again like it's it's cool content but you need you need other stuff to make it so um your mileage may vary if you don't have that or it's you're finding it hard to find one or the ringtail vixen set like probably just skip this one as well yep i would yep i'd skip this one just because it has the pumpkin stuff <laughs> um Next, we have Holiday White Speaker Nico. This is just a painter scale, uh, and it includes Story in the Snow, which is a settlement event that is included in the 1.6 card pack. So, uh, this settlement event doesn't really need to be talked about. This settlement event is just super meta. It's just, you can just decide if you've been cheating. It, it canonizes cheating. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a weird one. So... I'm not a huge fan of yeah, this one. I would don't don't purchase this white box. Just get the legendary card pack. Yep. Um, if you want this content, um, I think I like the I like the settlement event. I love anything that adds like additional settlement events, additional hunt events. Um, but but yeah, it, you're all right about uh, about it. Like makes it makes cheating into like a game rule basically, which is is just such a strange concept. But yep. you know, you keep track of how how much you're cheating, but. You know, if you're already cheating, like, why are you keeping track of how much you're cheating? Yep. Uh, I know. So anyway. That's, yeah. I mean, it's so weird because I know when we first started doing tasting notes, I think Gravis asks me, like, uh, ask if you can just cheat to roll a 10 to cheat on the cheating card. <laughs> I remember we asked, I we asked a question that was regarding something similar along those lines and taste was just like, I'm not talking about yeah was, oh did we actually like ask it the specifics yeah it was something i can't remember what the question was but yeah it was it was pretty funny yeah reply to that and that's that's fair i respect that so uh i would not buy this one at all um because you could just get this if you if you want the content the mini's cool though i like nico but if you want the if you want the stuff i would just buy the 1.6 card back um next yeah we have lola win Lola Wynn, we did a whole video on Lola Wynn. I really enjoy Lola Wynn. Her thing is super cool. I've done a whole video on her. She was the first one to introduce uh, character cards. She is super cool. Her uh, hobby sculpt is cool, and her game sculpt is cool. I liked both of them. I like the Lagomorph Kabato. This is super cool. Where it's we... kind of cool. One of the things that's that I find really interesting is like Urza of Deadheim and um, and Lollowin. They're both illustrated by by Q mm -hmm. or Q. Was that I think it's Q, right? Yeah. Um, Q is one of the newer artists for Kingdom Death. Most of like the new art is done by them. Um, and like you can you can see his style like translated into the sculpt as well. Like it's not just like limited to his illustrations i agree um so yeah it's, it's interesting he's got some yeah some, i mean he's some pretty details much details in his artwork that, that they've really yeah they've pretty much defined the character deck right all the artwork seems to be done by them in the character deck right um, I'm not sure about the character deck, but I know like the actual like shop description page for Lollowin and like, for example, like Faultless and uh, like all the lanternism art and stuff is all done by Q. Oh, all right. Well, whoever did these character cards, this artwork, this artist is the whole deck is like this. 
Yeah, I hope they remain consistent. I hope like, so because it's I very hope cool. The style doesn't change because yeah, it's 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 really special. All these character uh, portraits. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Lagomorph Combato. Uh, super cool. I think this is one of the better gear cards. I love this. This introduced Rush, and then we got to find what Surpass does. You know, this I don't even know what um, Rush does. Rush, when a survivor hits three plus times in a single attack, they rush for that attack. So it's kind of. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's like kind of a, a, a boon for um, like high speed weapons. Or exactly three. <laughs> exactly three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because you don't need to hit six times. You don't get any bonus for hitting so much. But if you hit three or more times... So, yeah, it's arguably a high-speed boon, but I definitely wouldn't want to be like... You still don't want to go six deep with the Katars and stuff. But, yes. <laughs> I only go deep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is so cool. I really like this. Uh, this... this I spent, like, a whole day doing just absolute nutso stuff, and then Jay and I were talking, and then Taste jumped in. Uh, were, you, were you there in Lanterns Rain that whole day? We spent theory crafting on how to no, get. No, this is this is when I was kind of uh, not present at the time. So all I right, well, that. yeah, uh, man mask was it or lion mask? Whichever one gives you tokens, you can convert all your survival into to strength tokens. Uh, and then you use the Banshee Dura stuff, and man, we. Jay and I, we built like a thing where you were, where if you surpassed, you doubled your wound attempt on the first location and you were getting like consistent. Oh, I remember you guys talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. And Taste was like, wow, that's pretty good. And I was like, yeah, the goal was to constantly surpass Gold Smoke Knight. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's White Lion Mask. If insane, spend activation to lose all your survival and gain that many plus one yeah, tokens. That's what it was. And then with the Banshee Dura, because you couldn't spend survival anyway. So, nuts. But this is fun. I liked Rush. I liked the I liked the surpass. I liked Rush. I liked the design of this. I liked the fact it's a club. Club really interacts well with this specific Rush thing where you double your first because you double you double because if you have club uh, special is it mastery or specialization? Which one doubles your first wound attempt? That's a good question. Well, whichever one it is, whichever specialization or mastery, I forget which one it is, but. You double double. It's so cool. It's so fun. I really liked it when this came out. I remember it. I had a That's fun time. Uh, specialization on a perfect hit. Double your wound attempt total. Yep. So this would double double. <laughs> double double. Yep. Two creams, two sugar. Yep. So it was fun. Uh, Lola Wynn had some fun stuff when, when she came out. Next, we have the Lunar Twilight Knight. Uh, she has a bunch of stuff, just like Urza of Deadheim. All kinds of stuff. Now, oh no, wait. I've jumped one ahead. Uh, I went to Goth. Uh, the Lunar Twilight Knight is the consumable. The fish. Yeah, it has the fish of uh, fish of abundance. Yes. Um, this one is interesting because it has a base. Comes with a basic hunt event. Now, this one was also interesting because it's the same sculpt as we've been talking through all these. The hobby sculpts include a different game. This one includes the hobby sculpt and the game piece sculpt are exactly the same. They're the same sculpt. Uh, that's worth noting. So uh, this is interesting because this doesn't this doesn't have like the food key tag. This doesn't work with like the new CC food and stuff. It doesn't look the same, right? No, I think this was kind of meant to tease the idea of, of like, the dishes, meal, the meal cards. Yeah, yeah. but um, I kind of wish it did. Yeah, I wish it, this is another one where this came out this year. You'd think they would really have had that stuff finalized, so. But, again, you know, it adds a basic hunt event card, so I'm a big fan of that. Um, this was kind of like a special card to me because this was this was released during um, Black Friday, so it was like a New Year's kind of related mm -hmm. um, thing. And uh, at the same time this released, me and uh, my partner, we both had made the actual like fish meal that this is based oh. off of it's like a braised sea bream yes so it's a very common thing in like asian cultures to to eat 
a sea bream um, during the new year because it's like supposed to bring you good luck and good fortune. So it was like this came out the exact same time. It's just like this really strange moment of synchronicity, which was which was really cool. So I this this gets a little bit of bonus points for that personal experience, but yeah, very neat. I think this was a neat thing. I just wish it would have been more synced up with the meals. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is just not a lot of content when you're looking at the other ones, when you're comparing. So, uh, but that's Lunar Twilight Night. I actually did. I actually like the sculpt too, but it's just a shame that both sculpts are the same. But I liked. I did like the sculpt. Next, we have Oktoberfest Aya. Now, this is an older one. Uh, that was reprinted, right? Because there was an original Oktoberfest Aya that was just a brown box and a and a smaller sculpt. Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I thought I thought it was. This was uh, this was an original for uh, it was like a Halloween sale. Maybe this was 2019s or 2020s Halloween. Yeah. So this is this was super cool. I remember this one, Oktoberfest Aya. This one. Uh, this is this is really cool. <laughs> I remember when this one came out. This was like right. I think this might have been right after tenth anniversary survivors because it had the patterns and everything. Mm-hmm. But I remember. Oh yeah, because the patterns are really low. Oh yeah, it is number seven. So this would have been after the six from tenth anniversary. Yeah. Right. So uh, this was really cool. But I remember specifically. This being another another instance of not saying the expansions that you needed and then required Lonely Tree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then, even after that, because I, I just remember that for me specifically because Lonely Tree was the very last one that I bought, and I think I bought it the same Black Friday because I just never had bought Lonely Tree. Uh, and I didn't buy it until the first set of reprints i think in 20s 18 or something like that but anyway uh after death brew i remember this just being super super ridiculous <laughs> just the whole like concept the whole concept of it yeah yeah uh the whole thing was just too funny to me uh oh after death That's brew so you spend an action you consume this and gain five bleeding tokens so you die basically and then uh, during the aftermath, roll 1d10 for each survivor that died from bleeding tokens. On a 9+, plus, the blue saves their life but makes them deaf. This is so interesting to me. I don't even know why. I remember this, and I just always wrote this off as being... This is like the first taste I've ever had of making, like... Uh, why do they release gear? This doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> There are some cool, like now that we have gambler chests, there's like so many interesting bleed based builds that we could play around with that this would actually yes. kind of work well, right? Like maybe, uh, but you have yeah, to, yeah, 100%. Like Blood Dancer, right? Blood Dancer again, Blood Dancer 3 is a knowledge card from Crimson Crocodile, it gives you plus one strength for each of your bleeding tokens. Maybe you just consume this and maybe you, you need, gain five bleeding tokens. You need to live five bleeding tokens kills you. Yeah, but if you have, if you can take more, like there's an other knowledge card that lets you. That's survive. true. But at the time so, when this released, Gambler's Trust was not a thing. Well, it was. It was in maybe, development. maybe it was in development the whole time this was on. So I that's mean, true. With, uh, but uh, I just remember this. This this was to me. This is one of the first times where I ever just looked at a piece of gear and was like, "How does this work?" Because this kills you. You consume it. It kills you. And then during the aftermath, who cares? You're dead, so this doesn't trigger. <laughs> well, it does trigger because you know the card says it triggers. So oh, okay. So yeah, it's, it's like an otherwise situation, you know, like oh. <laughs> but I remember that. So this is very cool. Um, <laughs> I always remember that. It was like the very first moment where I was like, wow, this is such a weird, fascinating card. And it made me think about all the stuff. But then it was, it's also Aya. I remember the artwork for Aya was cool. I really liked the sculpt. This is another one of those sculpts that you always see in painting contests. Yeah. I think people just love like these big, these big painters minis. Like they're, it's, it's kind of weird because like, I'm so out of that side of the hobby 
that I don't really realize like how popular like some of these minis are to paint. So yeah, I remember kudos to all the painters out there. Um, I was I was talking to Poots about it right because we were before the interview and stuff, and we were talking talk for a while before that, and I mentioned to him like I was talking about how like Kingdom of Death transcends its own hobby because uh, like it's not just the game, but people buy it for the game, and you include all the game content. And it's above miniatures stuff. And Kingdom Death is one of those things where you go to conventions. Like, I've been to, like, the cool mini or not, the brush conventions. Like, you just go to other random conventions. Not just Gen Con, but you go to, I don't know, like, there's it's other conventions. Other hobbies yeah. conventions. Other Warhammer. And you always see that the all the Kingdom Death miniatures will always win those golden brushes or whatever. Now, I'm sure it's probably because, you know, the same people are probably winning those. Yeah, and those people are Kingdom Death fans. But it's always so interesting to me that I could be going to like just a like a PAX and you'll walk by the golden brush and you'll just see Kingdom Death minis with awards on them. I was telling Poots about that, that I was like, that's so cool. I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so happy for you that you've gotten this in your company. And this was one of them. I remember seeing Aya on her on her uh, Death Brew. You're going you to make them tear up more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. um, Adam had actually asked on Lantern's Brain the other other day um about like which model that people people would like to see oh yeah uh, I saw as, a, that. as a painter scale miniature so i guess that's like a good, good like way to interact with the viewers is like if you guys have like a any thoughts like what would you like to see as painter scale minis like out of the whole range of kingdom death what would you like to see but don't ping don't up? ping adam <laughs> well no you can just write it in the comments yeah yeah, yeah yeah you can't ping adam in the comments but um yeah don't, definitely don't ping anybody from team death and atlantis right that's against the rules you can get muted so yeah um, that's... So, yeah this uh this again this is a good a good uh candidate for being reprinted it's seed patterns but it does not have the seed keyword the pattern backs are wrong it's missing the seed pattern uh pattern yeah. symbols in the top right corner of the gear they're missing the seed keyword etc yeah. etc but otherwise yeah these are this is when patterns were just being introduced and they were like oh wow this is crazy like what can yeah. we do with these i think it's a very neat one uh mm -hmm. next uh we have santa satan which is which one is that? That's Xmas, right? Uh, yeah, or not? Uh, it's the X Max. <laughs> no, not that one yet. Oh, it's That's not that. One? This is this is uh, this is Satan Santa or Santa Satan, the one that comes with uh, lump of Atness. Oh, the lump of Atness. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's right, lump of Atness. This is a neat one too. This is uh, again. Something that I think is no longer. Maybe it still is. I forget. I think we asked Taste um, about it. It was. It was available last Christmas. Yeah, that's what you were saying. No, no. The, the lore of Atnis here. We asked Taste about this, right? He says it's still around, or they say it's still around. It. No, it is. It is. There is. Uh, Atnis has a uh, AI card that references Lump of Atnis. Um, Interesting. So yes, this is. This is still a. The, the the rationale behind it has changed. Um, so originally in the Kickstarter, Adam talked about this, how Atnes was going to be like, you know, he was so powerful that all these other entities had to like split him up into all these cubes and you have to rejoin the cubes in order to fight him. So that's not canon anymore. But um, the lump of Atnes does exist still in the canon. But I won't spoil that part. Neat. Uh, yeah, so this was a uh, another this holiday pinup kind of miniature. It came with a game scale mini as well as a painter scale mini, um, and then it came with one strain card and then the lump of Atnes basic resource. So this would be another card that would have that kind of pink hexagon with the stop hand in it. So you don't add lump of Atnes until you've um, triggered the milestone condition of the atmospheric change um, card. This is. This one's kind of like a very interesting strain because it, it permanently removes another settlement event and one that people are kind of negative towards in general. So it, it kind of like giving people a break a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so when you trigger the settlement event, which you do by um, either triggering the Necrotoxic Mistletoe story event from 
Flower Knight expansion or the Settlement Event Story in the Snow from the Holiday White Speaker Nico expansion. So uh, you need you need that content in order to, you know, achieve this this strain. But if you do have that stuff, um, it does remove Heat Wave and adds Lump of Atnas to your your decks respectively. Um, so Heat Wave. Uh, basically stops any survivors returning survivors with heavier fur gear from departing the next lantern year. So this um this card kind of cools them off and that 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 settlement event is removed from your settlement event deck permanently since the strain is activated permanently, right? Uh yeah. What do you think about that? It's an interesting one. I don't know exactly how it works. I think it would only archive it for that campaign because it is only archiving it, and I don't think you ever reach read. It's a permanent effect. Uh sure. <laughs> uh, and then the lump of Atnis is a really interesting resource, and this would had this had to be eroded as well. But basically, every settlement phase, if you have five plus lumps of Atnis. Um, the smell of them draws a survivor sniffing through the darkness. Gain plus one population with a random disorder. So the question that had come up around this was, if you have plus five plus lumps of Atnas, does it trigger five plus times as they, they proc off of each other? But no, it, it only happens once um, per settlement phase. But it's like a pretty convenient way to get additional population and if you do need it as a resource it counts as a bone hide and organ as well so um there was a kind of like some wait did, controversy with this, this image here is this altered to add, to add that gain this once per settlement phase regardless of how many lumps are in storage that was that that's like the updated that's the faq'd version of it ah okay um but that's not how it was printed originally um so yeah, this this model when it came out, it had like a image in the shop description where it was like mystery bonus present um, included. So you didn't really know what it came with. So people were like pretty stressed out when this came out originally because they're like, "Whoa, what's it gonna come with? Like, do I get it? Do I not get it? Like, it's kind of like a FOMO inducing miniature." Um, so. I don't think we we haven't really had anything like that. The closest thing was Birthday Aya, but even that they were like, don't scroll down if you don't want to be spoiled. So I think they learned their lesson about like hiding what the content is going to include, especially when it's like a sixty dollar miniature. Correct. Um, so that's that's a very good lesson that I'm I hope that they took away from that. And uh, yeah, yep, I think that was covered very well. Moving on. We have Summer Goth next, the one I accidentally thought was last time. So Summer Goth is the one that has the three patterns and three gear. Uh, this is interesting. This was the one that um, really came out, and then we uh, had a lot of lore behind it. This was the mm -hmm. first seed pattern, the first official seed one. Because I remember this is when we started talking about seed, and we got the tasting notes to say that seed and insight, they worked. they're the same thing, it's fine. Uh, but this one introduced a lot of Watcher-related stuff and introduced the Void Fabric, which is very interesting. I think it's mentioned again in Gambler's Chest, correct? This one has a lot of lore implications mm -hmm. towards Gambler's Chest, but it's stuff that we shouldn't... No, we're not going to spoil it. I'm just saying... Yeah. No, I, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like way... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just it's saying like that... Deep, deep lore stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you, yeah, yeah. if you're playing Gambler's Chest... And you are enjoying it. Just, just keep an eye out for connections between this content and some of the other content in Gambler's Chest, and you'll be like, Whoa. "Yeah, yep, yeah, yep." Yeah. I agree. I was just, yep. We don't have to spoil it. I was just saying that this one, this was a very, very fun time when this released to speculate on lore and stuff. It was a fun time. Uh, yeah. And again, the one thing about these, I think the pattern cards, the actual seed pattern cards, don't have an orange back, so these would need to be reprinted if they wanted to remain consistent with the GCE level of pattern cards. Um, so we might see these in a card pack in the future. Correct. This was also the first time we got seeds that were... Uh, Negative and positive, right? This is the first release to do that, I think. 
Um, yeah, because then Urza of Deadheim, I think, has yeah. one negative and a positive. Maybe yeah. not. I can't remember. Uh, there is, um, this but, was the first time I think it happened. Yeah, so the Ghost Guarder arms and Ghost Guarder legs are both positive seed patterns. What that means is positive seed patterns are like kind of like canon um, like gear that survivors could come up with, whereas like negative seed patterns like the Black Star Bikini are like a little bit more on the like humorous side or less serious side. Yeah. Um, not that garters are really that much more serious than a bikini, but um, as far as the game's concerned, that's that's how they separate them. Yep. Uh, the gear itself, eh, not super cool. Like, I mean, it's neat, the, the lore and stuff, but the gear itself was always just okay. Um, yeah. Do you have anything to There's say about the There's got to be some gear? build for this, though, that we haven't really thought about yet, because it's such high-level gear, but... We, you know, it's nothing about it is like you really are like super drawn to it, I suppose, you know? Yeah, the best one's the negative pattern. Yeah, and even then, if you're terrified, like you, it's it's nullified, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. There's got to be a build. If you guys have any ideas, build, build ideas for Black Star Bikini and Ghost Garters, then let us know. Yeah. Maybe there's something cool that we're missing out on. Um, this also was another Allison, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is Allison. Oh, and yeah, her lore, her lore blurb. Her, her lore story. blurb was neat. Yep. Some really good, uh, some really good lore and buried in there as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, this was this whole time. Cause this is like summer Cyrus, summer goth, summer Aya. Yep. And, uh, yeah, there was just some cool, some cool stuff that came out of that. So this one came also with a uh, narrative miniature as well. It's yep. like Allison. Yeah. Um, this is the one where she's wearing the face mask, right? The what? She's wearing a face mask, I think. Oh, yes. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's Very like neat. walking with her body yep. sword or getting ready to pull it out dramatically. Um, neat stuff. Yeah. Uh, very good one. I think that was one. That was probably. That one's very good candidate for getting reprinted, I think. Um, next. Yeah, I agree. Uh, <laughs> most so controversial on this list, probably. This is Till Death Do Us Part. Uh, this one, I don't, this one needs to be reprinted. Uh, but at the same time, I think this just became Arc Intimacy. Right? I mean, I don't, I don't know enough off about arc intimacy off the top of my head but like these 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 partnership abilities are... um well okay devoted union i know that one's a whole thing yeah. <laughs> but enduring <laughs> legacy arc arc intimacy on a seven eight or nine no six seven or eight arc intimacy if you you can just pass down knowledges so it's but like i i do completely agree with you that these need to be Especially they've been re-released so many times that it needs they need to be addressed. Like they have been beta gear for like like five years, six years. Prototype. Um, yeah. I think you put the so, beta band on there. All right. They're they're not beta gear, but like they're they're pretty much beta or prototype innovations, but they've existed for so long they shouldn't be beta anymore. Yes. Um, the combined attack from Devoted Union has a lot of kind of rule complications that have been discussed very yep. heavily ad nauseum um, and and they need to yeah they need to be like fixed i guess is, is kind of what i'm saying love the artwork though the artwork of the yep. intimacy survivors is excellent yep um i love the two yeah, sculpts so i'd like to see something more permanent because if they if they had like permanent cards for these like permanent principles i i'd be on board with buying them because right now i this is one of the white box sets that i don't have yep enduring legacy is the one that I think uh, should be really incorporated. Uh, the passing down fighting arts and stuff, I think this is what would really help bring back, uh, you know, m would at least make fighting arts kind of a little bit better. Rather, you know, to compete with ARC, because there's probably going to be a time where everyone's going to start deciding whether or not they even want to use regular survivors or not. 
and uh, I think this 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 could be the thing that might help. Um, but yes, this has been forever. This is just uh, if you like the minis, very cool. Uh, yeah, I know that the intimacy couple is like pretty popular. Yeah, intimacy couples are very popular. I really like them. Intimacy couples, the ones that are included in one point five. I think they actually intimacy couple might always been included. Were they a one point five edition? They might have been just always in Kingdom Death. I think they, I think they were added at one point five, but I don't know. I wasn't around back then. Yeah, but back they're the they're days. in there and they're really cool. So I really enjoy the, the intimacy couple. They're in every all the artwork. In every intimacy, <laughs> I think. Even in like the ones we saw from uh, uh, the mountain, right? I think we saw that. They were even right. in there. Yeah, they were reaching for that conspicuous That's uh, right. flower in the palm that yep. definitely is not going to grab them and drag them underwater to a horrible... Yeah. <laughs> uh, next, we have Valentine's Day Twilight Night, which is Valentine's Day Twilight Night. This is the... Cake, yeah. There's no, there's nothing here for this one. Uh, yeah, it's a Scoopy Club. This is Scoopy Club. Scoopy Club, that was it. Oh, I don't. The Scoopy Club. Okay, well, Scoopy Club, Scoopy Club's really good. That's all I had to say about that. Scoopy Club is Scoopy Club. Yeah, you gain it really easily. You only need to innovate scrap smelting. Yep. And basically, it gains days like Skull Cap Hammer anytime that you are involved in any kind of situation that involves vomit. So it's a very narrative card. Like, you got to keep track of like when you're being vomited on, when you vomit, when you're adjacent to vomit, when you can scoop up a bunch of vomit, basically. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of situations in the game. More than you can probably think off the top of your head, but there's a lot of vomit related events and scenarios in, in King of Death Monster, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, this this mini also comes with a uh, gameplay miniature as well as a, a narrative miniature. I'm not a huge fan of this narrative miniature. I always thought it looked really like kind of goofy. Well, there, this is old, it's so it's, it's the small scale as well. Yeah, the small scale, yeah, it's not, it's all right. not the best anymore. It's like I a agree. little too too silly for me for my for my campaigns. Yeah, need something more in, in yeah. the universe. But lots of people seem to have painted it. So yeah, uh, the one where she's coming out of the cake is very. That's a very neat one. Uh, yeah, I've seen so. that one multiple times. But yeah, Scoopy Club is really good. <laughs> Scoopy. So I mean, if you if you want to chase this to get Scoopy Club, totally understandable. Scoopy Club is one of the best weapons in the game. <laughs> And you know what? This is like this is the actually the only white box that I don't have um, outside of you know uh, till death was part because it's like beta gear or beta yeah. content. But Scoopy Club, I, this is this is one I need to get. I just every Valentine's Day, there's like something else that I have to get that like overrides my desire to spend eighty Canadian dollars on a single gear card. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, that's an older one, though. I doubt... So you'd have to chase that one down. I don't think that's going to get reprinted. I don't think they're going to redo Scoopy Club. I also don't think they're going to redo the next one we're talking about. Oh, no. But first, we're going to talk about the, the last the last white box we're talking about. I don't think they're going to redo that one either. Uh, but before that, we're going to do the uh, Winter Solstice Lucy. So Winter Solstice Lucy, automatically a good one because it's Lucy, right? <laughs> oh, it's good to mention Scoopy Club with Scoopy Club, right? Like, you know, if this gets reprinted, I think this would be a good candidate for uh, seed pattern gear. Uh, but also, it's a tool. It has the tool keywords. So I don't think really Scoopy Club should be uh, reprinted the way it is. I think Scoopy Club needs some Scoopy kind of Club. balance. <laughs> no, Scoopy Club's great. Uh, yeah, Scoopy Club is great. I agree with that. Scoopy Club is so really if you, good. Uh, <laughs> if you, uh, Scoopy Club, if you... Actually, I guess that doesn't work. But you know uh, what? Now that I think about speed, it, plus three accuracy and sharp on Scoopy Club with tool belt. So yeah, it's, uh, it's nuts. Scoopy Club's Scoopy stacked, Club's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Winter Solstice Lucy. Winter Solstice Lucy includes the Grim Muffler, which <laughs> one of your gear loses the noisy keyword as you hide it in this cloak. So it's the only way to get around Harvester currently. 
Anti harvester defense. Anti harvester defense in a sixty dollar white box. Yes, uh-huh. and um, yeah, it also uh, if you complete the affinity bonus, you ignore survival loss from cold hunt events. Yep. And it's up to you what that means. We- yeah, you may be asking, what is a cold hunt event? Well, don't worry, we asked that question for you. And basically, it is uh, any kind of narrative situation that your table decides um, merits becoming a cold hunt event, but don't abuse it to protect yourself from survival loss. Yep, so don't complete... Be realistic in it. Yeah, don't complete the lump of Atnus thing and then just say everything's cold now. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> narratively i mean yeah may- <laughs> um yeah this is another this is another pretty early uh seed pattern card uh i didn't have the seed pattern keyword so it's eligible for a reprint with the appropriate uh design um assets i suppose um but yeah again this is like kind of like if you want to avoid harvester if you want to if you want to do like instrument builds this works really well with a lot of the smog singer stuff, especially if you have a survivor that you want to make sure stays alive. Um, and the off chance that you roll harvester or a baby in the sword or, um, yeah, it's like, this is a good, a good gear card to carry with you. Yep. It also canonized baldness. Canonized baldness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's okay. Survivors are bald. Um, so the sometimes. last, the last one we have to talk about is uh, the Xmas special pinup Twilight Night, uh, which has never been reprinted ever. I, um, I I have this, so it must have been available at some point. Yeah, it's never been reprinted ever. Um, yeah, this was this was one that I didn't feel too great about buying because it's a kind of a gaggy um a gaggy piece of content yeah but, does this even you know, say how you get it times, yeah it does so oftentimes people are like oh this is a promo gear card but in reality it's like a recipe gear card like it has a black background it doesn't have a promo back you can just craft it anytime you want so how do you craft is, this um to craft it you require sculpture and storytelling it costs two times leather, two times bone, and one times fresh acanthus. Huh. Um, so mostly the innovations are what's gating you from from building it. Um, but I mean, it's pretty it's pretty good. Like yeah, the, it's, it's the pretty special good. Special rule: the weapon strength is equal to your current insanity. Like there's some ways to to get some pretty high levels of insanity. Yep. Um, so for example, like golden eyed king of a thousand years, right? You defeat defeat that phoenix and uh, yeah. Well, like infinite. A, you know, what is that? It gives you like a thousand insanity or infinite insanity loops. T- the taste was just asked this like this week, because uh, in one of my live streams, I found an infinite insanity loop in Gambler's Chest. Yeah, uh, and I know Taste recently even I think it was today even Taste said like infinite insanity loops are not like inherently like problematic, like a wrong piece yeah. of the game, like. Like they are there. Like you just have to do specific things to get them. If it's like you want to, if you want to do that, like you're free to. Yep. But there's even some ways to get some pretty high levels of sanity that are not infinite, and uh, yep. you know, break this piece of gear basically. Yep. Um. So yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I don't think it's worth the sixty dollars or whatever that you need to pay well to chasing get it down it. i don't think you'd find this for sixty dollars i think you'd have to chase this third oh, party yeah, now but if it was back in the store you know like uh, i'm not sure how important it is for you uh yeah to kind of pursue this unless you really want to broken gear uh paint uh well i'd say if you want to paint the um the the paint oh, yeah miniature. like it's it's probably a good card to get. Yeah. You also do get like um three extra X Max like uh mm-hmm. weapon piece like models, I guess, to use for your armor sets. So that aren't to scale anymore. That's, that's kinda cool. No, that aren't to scale anymore. Well, I don't know. It could be like a little hatchet. You don't know how big an X Max is. Ah, oh, that's true. Be. Could be a hatchet. Um but yeah, it's that's like a cool little bonus. I wish actually they did that kind of stuff more often. Yeah. 
and customizable part that you could uh, throw on. So yeah, very cool. All um, right, so that, that is the last the, piece. That is the last piece of the over thirty-one dollars. <laughs> Uh, the two that we didn't mention were Pinups of Death 2. That included the Dark Seamstress. And, uh, well, we did mention them here. at the beginning of it, part one. It is, in, it is in the Legendary card pack. So yeah. um, if that's content that you're interested in, that's probably the, the cheap. That's actually cheaper to get that because the Pinups of Death 2 is like 100 US dollars or something like that, I think, right? Yeah. Um, so unless you really want the Pinup minis, the, the best way to get that, that content is through the Legendary card pack. And then uh, the other one was the birthday Aya, which I know Bra's done a video on pretty recently. So um, there is. Yeah, some... that's also a prototype or not. Yeah. Not oh, yeah, it is beta. That's right. Okay. Never mind. We can ignore it then. Yeah. It's also, or beta. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So no beta. We did not talk about any of the beta stuff. So uh, yeah, we're not talking about any beta stuff except uh, till death do you do us part. Well, that was technically uh, prototype. Uh, well, what's the difference? <laughs> yeah, what's the difference? That one, yeah, we'll see what happens. That's the only one we're talking about, Death to Us Part, because I know it's been reprinted multiple times, and I know a lot of people like it because it is very neat. I do know that that one exists, and it's very, search, uh, very like high commodity because of the uh, Enduring Legacy. It's really cool. The Enduring Legacy is really good. I really like that one. It really does make the game. It changes up quite a bit, so that is why I did want to include Till Death to Us Part. That's fair. Okay, so what are your uh, top three picks for over $31? Uh, this is, again, I'm not going to say which one's the best here because I think all of these are n very, very close because they're all going to be $60 ones and they are all bundles, in my opinion. My top three are 10th Anniversaries, Echoes of Death 2, and Echoes of Death 3. Ooh, double echoes. I chose tenth anniversary survivors, Echoes of Death three, only because it has the fiddler crab spider. Um, so that pushes it like a little bit nudge ahead of the other Echoes of Death packs. And Fair. the um Death Crown Inheritor Aya, because I think, you know, that pattern deck for pattern gear needs a little bit of love. I think it's nice that the Phoenix gets a new AI card. Um, and I think it's like a nice little kind of tease of the Indomitable resource set in a similar way as Longfall and more. I will say Death Crown Inheritor Aya would have been like my number five. Um, Your top five, yeah. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been. That, it's, a, it's a good. It's a good amount of content, you know. Like that's. Let me, I will say this: Death Crown Inheritor Aya would have been the would have been the own would have been the best. I think of all these, it's the best one that's not a bundle of four survivors. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now the only reason why I don't uh, Death Crown Inheritor, I just wish it was indomitable and I wish it didn't have that randomness of the trait I just don't like the fact that you could totally blank on it I, I just don't like the feels bad stuff and I'm not a huge like person who hates the like randomness right like I'll if you've been watching live stream and stuff I don't care I'll die to Harvester I'll die to all those things from randomness I just don't like when you're specifically told to hunt like a level two or well, you could hunt a level one Phoenix and try to get the, the legendary thing, but like it's only a 25% chance. I If you hunt a level three, I think it's like a 75% chance, but I just don't like the fact that you could do that specifically and miss the card. I think that feels so bad. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like you can hunt for it if you want. Like there's there's lots of tools available to you. Yeah. Uh, like fish for it, basically, right? So I don't think it's... Uh... Too, well, too bad. No, I, I agree. Like I said, I, I, it's just a weird that the white box would be go fish content. Right? Like most white boxes, it's a recipe. So then you just make the recipe and you always have access to it. Uh, Echoes of Death, you do the strain, then you always have access to it. This one, it's just like it's always go fish. Like it's always just play go fish. But like I said, that's fine. I guess with characters, right, that's going to be a thing. I guess with patterns, it's all that's as the pattern deck gets bigger and bigger, it's also going to be always playing Go Fish. But exactly. it's just about like you know, bringing longevity to parts of the game. Yeah, it's like like it I makes said, it more interesting IMO because you're getting these kind of 
you know, throwy situations where it's like, oh, I could have this or I could not have this or like, you know, yeah. you, you want to plan for certain things, but it's just, it just doesn't happen. Like, yeah, that's that's those are the kind of moments that that make the game more interesting, I think, and like really yeah. like, attracts people. To like it. I said, I think this is and again, I, if had it been included in Gamba's Chest, I wouldn't have had a problem with it whatsoever. The only reason why I just didn't like it was because it attached to a white box, and that's a $60 separate purchase that you're now playing random for. That's fine. And like I said, that's it. Uh, I think it's great. I think Death Crown Inheritor is, or Death Crown Inheritor Aya is still great. I think she's still the best one. Of, she would be the one I would pick if I wasn't going to pick a bundle. So. Yeah, I really like Echoes of Death. Like, all the Echoes of Death, I think, are great purchases. They have a lot uh, of content in them. They've got a lot of miniatures. I, yeah. And they're just, they're great miniatures. Like I agree. Um, I just I just didn't want to choose for my top three. Be like, uh, Echoes of Death 2, Echoes of Death 3, and Echoes of Death 4. Oh, like I did? You no, know, like, I wanted, I wanted. <laughs> oh, like I did? Oh, okay. A little, more, a little bit more variety <laughs> than just, you know, like. Uh, yeah, than me? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. know that, boring, but that, to, to be fair, uh, that's why we split up the list. I think uh, after now, after we've now spent like two hours going over every white box and talking about all of them, the Echoes are really cool. Like, they really are really cool. You get four game miniatures. They have a lot of meta builds. They're really cool. I, li I like the yeah. strength fighting arts. They're just really cool. They're really cool. And seeing all the cards laid out really puts into perspective like how much content you really get with each one. So mm -hmm. if you have a lot of this content and, or if you're like thinking about it, like, you know, take a look. Think about yep. the cards. Think about how much is involved. And, you know, I think a great thing to do is you let us know what your favorite white box is. What do you like about it? What do you think is the best value? What do you think has the best miniatures? What has the best content? Let us know. Yeah, because the I I was like I said at the beginning of the part one, I was surprised how many people asked me this on live stream. I I probably got this. It came up in the comments as I was setting up settlement. Someone would always ask me like, "What's your favorite white box?" or "What do you think of this white box?" So, yeah, I'm surprised. And uh, we didn't do any really like deep dives on some of the stuff. I know no. we have videos on all this, but if yeah. people want to see, you know, us go in more detail on some of the contents that you haven't maybe done a video on, that's completely cool too like we've uh leave a comment for that as well yep next time we talk yeah. for two hours we'll talk lore because <laughs> i'm sure that's what everyone's gonna be like if you two were talking lenore did i hear you we're gonna talk about lenore for two hours <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I, I can already okay. see it now all the comments are gonna be like if you two spent two hours should have done a lore video ah <laughs> should have could have would have yeah should have could have would have all right thank you so much for joining me you're welcome uh, I look forward to the next time we chat. It's always fun. You're always welcome to join me on any video you wish. It's an open invite, sure. as I've always said. Next time I'll just be uh, singing randomly in the background of one of your live streams. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Have a good night. Yep, you too. Thank you for joining me.